When I bought my bike from Boise Gear Collective, they gave me two checkups a year, so I'm bringing it in for its first one before I head out on the trip. Charlie's all confused. He's like, oh, are we leaving? Are we going? What's cool? You going? Am I supposed to say my bye? So I bought a 12 speed since I have a 12 speed chain. This gentleman's telling me it, I might need a different brand. This is for Shimano's com main competitor's system. There are instances in which it may work, but for optimum performance and you know, if you don't wanna risk any potential headaches in terms of how specifically fitted something is to the system in which it's intended okay. to be used, wanna essentially match the link to the chain. Your clutch is disengaged when this switch is down in this position because it's intended for more aggressive off-road riding. When this clutch is engaged, this locks the derailleur into a much stiffer position. Okay. You can still shift across the range of gears, but if you're hitting heavy bumps, this thing's not going anywhere. It prevents it from slapping the frame. It oh. prevents it from, if you lose tension on the chain, it's gonna pedal funny. It can ghost shift and skip around. You just wanna make sure that while you're riding, this switch is in this upward position. If you need to remove the wheel for maintenance, that's what that's for. And then it allows you to move the derailleur out of the way of the cassette. This is awesome. I feel much safer now. And the squeaking would have just been annoying. It yeah. wouldn't have actually. And then I got home and I biked on the street with weight and it started clicking. I'm bringing my bike back to Boise Gear Collective. So frustrating. So that's called the barrel adjuster. Barrel adjuster. When you touch that, it'll make it worse. Basically, it'll make it worse. So the, the, the barrel adjuster is adjusted right to where you want it for the cable tension. It's a micro adjustment for the cable tension. The cable okay. tension will define how well the derailleur shifts. So you have to have the tension adjusted appropriately and accurately for it to shift the best. And that's where it's at right now. Just left Boise Gear Collective. You know what their answer was? Well, you saw us outside. The tech had me go and you know ride it. He rode it, and he's like, you know. It should be fine. It did some crunching. It did it. It wasn't fluid. I mean, I'd ridden the bike before. I knew how it would shift. So the two guys came out from the store that worked there and they both got on my bike. And the one was like, yeah, it's not. And then the other guy came out because he went to go talk to the tech. And you know, the tech was like, just get rid of her. Because the other guy gave me this whole pitch about the click, click, click. Yeah, I get it. But you know, if you upshift and then downshift, it'll go away. I'm like, this doesn't sound right. My bike was fine before. I brought it in. That doesn't sound healthy. No, it's fine. My bike, I paid 6,000 for it. It makes all kinds of noises. You know, it just is what it is. I'm like, I don't know. So I left because I could tell they were exhausted with me. And quite frankly, if they can't figure it out, why would I bring it back in? So I'm going to go to another bike shop and I'm going to ask them. Idaho Mountain Touring. Let's see what they have to say and they fixed it. The B tension screw was about three and a half to four turns too tight, which brought this derailleur cage way out and that's why it was shifting so poorly. And there was a lot of resistance in the drive trains. And there is a line on the back of this that tells you how to adjust it. It's kind of hard to see through there. That's but. okay, but it, it's basically a general idea. So there's a line that shows you where it should be. Like yep, exactly lined up on these teeth. So it's and pretty was... straightforward on how to fix it. Oh yeah, so and it should never move. I still do want to take this cage off. Okay. Um, Cause it is going to make noise. Yeah, if it gets hit by anything, it's just a little thing. So I'll take that off and get you on your way. <sighs> Thank you so much. Did you hear what the tech just said? It's an easy fix. You just keep it aligned. There's actually a measuring thing there. Can you believe the shop where I bought my bike, in a sense, just gave up on me? Boise Gear Collective gave up on me. They gave up on the bike, but they also gave up on me knowing that I was going off into the mountains by myself for a month because I didn't bring it back in the third time to the tech. It's like he didn't want to see me. He did everything he could. And luckily, they have a level of intelligence here that exceeds the shop where I bought my bike. And I really wish I didn't buy my bike there. But I like to kind of have that relationship, go to the place where I bought my bike. I was hoping it was something hard so I could have more empathy, zero empathy. Can you believe this? this is like my whole day. This was supposed to be my day to relax. And now I feel like I need to leave another day later. Already like three weeks behind because of my knee. I'm finally now safe. Thought I was three, the three other times, <laughs> but I wasn't. Always ride your bicycle when you leave a shop. Always, always don't bring it and put it back on your car. Always ride your bicycle out of the shop if you had it looked at. I'm having a really surprise reaction. I just started crying. It's a mix of why was it so hard for people to make me feel safe on my bicycle, a bicycle shop, knowing I was going by myself. 
into the mountains. Like everybody knew that because I'd already been there a few times. And the fact that they, they would let me leave. I guess I was really frustrated and it's just a release now. Whenever I have to rely on other people, I just I always feel a little uneasy. I'm really jaded. And when it comes to like a service, an area that I'm, I don't know much about because you're really relying on them to tell you. So here I am relying on the shop where I bought my bicycle to be looking out for what's in my best interest. Like it was just too much for them to want to find a solution. And instead of just saying they can't figure it out, they gave me a bullshit answer. Anyway, thank goodness for Idaho mountain touring. We are leaving tomorrow. So it's time to do a little maintenance. Clean our ears. Give ourselves a little facial. Give the feet a great scrub down. I trim my toenails as far down as I can. I painted one toe. Once I've pulled everything I'm gonna wear, I wash it in drift. Yep, that's baby detergent. A little co-anchor with me here. His name is Charlie. Say hi, everyone. <laughs> Time to clean the chain. I don't need to degrease the chain or anything. I've only taken this bike out like six times and it's new. I have a little toothbrush that I'm gonna bring with me because this is for a little hard to reach areas. And on the trip, there might be little things that get stuck that I can't get out or reach. Like sometimes a lot of goop fills up around this ring. And so I can get in with this little toothbrush. And there's people that do great videos on how to do this the right way. There's no sense in me making a video about this, doing it the wrong way. <laughs> Time to tape the bike. I used the same tape last year on my cutthroat. Look it, it's flawless. The guy at the shop that you saw where I bought my bike to just have a tune up, he told me that my chain was 50% worn. And when I gasped, because I'm, it's easy riding 150 miles, I know the proper lube. He said, well, maybe the tool is off a little. And I'm thinking off a little, it would have to be off a lot for 50%. I'm losing space in the frame. The cutthroat had a much bigger area. I don't have the fork attachments like the cutthroat had. This is a mountain bike. It's not really designed as a touring bike. All camping in the back of my new setup on my rack. I'm very excited about this. I hope I, I love it as much as I think I will. It's all camping, tent, sleeping bag, you know, pajamas, everything having to do with when I go to my cold stuff is in here just when I go to bed at night. Food, heavy stuff down in here. I'll probably have a spare water in here. My awesome concept that I did last year, Walmart didn't sell the orange style anymore, which I preferred with the vertical pocket for my cell phone. It's horizontal. The weight of this moving forward is kind of hard to just sort of slide my cell phone in here, but it is what it is. Reading glasses, clothes in the front, rock bros, handlebar bag, my luxury item, raft. It's similar to last year, but the new addition that I have to do to make up for the forks not being there in a smaller frame pack is backpack. Super light and thin. When I start eating, you know, a lot of this stuff will get shifted around and will fit. Not only do I have less space on this bike, but last year I shipped stuff forward to, to a couple of warm showers I was staying at. Well, this year I'm gonna be in the wilderness. This is our bike inspector. Yeah, that's open. I need to close that. I didn't finish packing. What'd you think? It looks good? Everything in place? You need more nuts. Charlie, you can't come with me. 